MTG Paper Legacy Discord, uh, and this is the finals of our Saturday tournament. I am Prez BOTW, and joined here on commentary for the first time, Oliver V. How are you today? Hey there, fam. Good to be here. Yeah, good to have you. So this is going to be a real good one. We've had a, actually, it's been a real nice Saturday to TO today, which is great. Um, this is also the first Saturday event, or, Nor or North America time tournament, for the next season of the Invitational, which is really good. And um, I also just want to mention it here as well. Uh, Frosty has made first seed and third seed of the uh, of the invitational, the past two invitationals that we've had, and she has not yet managed to find the win in one of these weekly tournaments yet. So I kind of hope she gets her today. Well, she's starting off pretty strong for this season. Can we just say already going to be four zero in the first uh, weekly tournament that she was able to play? I know that yes. we had the first of the EU tournaments last week, the day after the Invitational. But the fact that she's already off to such a great start is a uh, she keeps on that grind. She's probably going to make it to the third Invitational as well. Yeah, and uh, of note here as well, um, as far as I'm aware, this is the first tournament I think I've seen Tarmago participate in. So fantastic run by them as well. Oh, absolutely. Can I just say how beautifully on theme and on point his play mat is? Or I'm sorry, yes. their play mat is? Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. So, okay, so uh, it sounds like players are about to start here. But, uh, yeah, this, this is going to be an interesting matchup for sure. I know Frosty was very, very worried about this matchup. So. Well, rightfully so. It's no, it's a known terrible matchup, right? And we do yeah. know that Tarmogoat mold to six for this. So we already, when playing this mom, have five cards in hand. Um, here's my real question. What's the turn one play you want to see out of Frosty here? I kind of would like to see a turn one Reclaimer in this matchup. I think that sounds like a really good idea. Uh, Reclaimer is really good. It allows you to go tutor up the lands you need on top of just being a large creature. Um, however, I also think... Um, 
I, I'd like to think that in Frosty's position, you probably actually want to just try and go a Turbo Merit Lage and just hope that Tarmogoat doesn't have the natural Karagas. Or the natural swords. Oh, yes. all right, so we're seeing double pedal. No land yep. drop yet. Oh, See the that's not a cavern. Okay. Oh, that being said, if this is a crop rotation and then sack the double pedals for the, uh, for, um, the... The, oh vampire, the vampire, vampire hexmage. Hex mage. Oh, Looks just like a being a pass. That's not good. Well, it could be Seeing fine. a port into attack with mom. Interesting. Proxy down to 19. I mean, it makes yeah. sense, right? You aren't really worried about uh, needing the protection in terms of game one at the very yeah. least. Yeah. Well, especially um, with the double lotus petals, you probably figure some kind of combo deck. Got it. Just got to get the clock going. Is yeah. this an upkeep tap? Ooh. I'm not sure yet if this is a float mana to cast something or if this is a port during upkeep. Let's see. Thanks as well to uh, Chaotic Bear for streaming today and Pie Boy for table spotting today as well. Okay, so this is an upkeep port. Yep. See, I don't even know how I feel about this, right? This seems like a lackluster turn two for Tarmogoat side. I feel like you want to be pressuring as much as possible. Um, Could while be. the disruption is great, at the same time, we aren't actually, uh, we aren't really clocking in any way, right? Yeah. Um, Mom also doesn't, isn't terribly great in this matchup. Uh, like, Th Thalia would be absolutely fantastic there, but at the same time, if Frosty has any way to kind of, you know, get around it, or if there was, uh, I guess with the no um, uh, Vampire Hex Mage, there's no way to get an instant speed Merit Lage on end step of turn one there, so it's not like yeah. you lose in that regard. So we so, are, however, they're going to sack a pedal for the Inquisition. Oh, there is, this is a Caracas in hand. Oh, taking gosh. The, taking the Flicker, the flicker Wisp, and oh, we got the one of Flag Zones. I love this in the list so much. Mad That's respect to the single good. Flag Zones. Oh, see, now this is so difficult. I'm going to yeah. look at Fossey's main board very quickly. So from this situation, it feels like Frosty needs to get to a situation now where uh, she either has the Knot of This World, the Two of Stifle, or the Two of Pithing Needle that she has main deck. Um, um, Knot of This World also does protect from Caracas. Yeah. So okay. there, yeah, so the three Knot of This World, the Two Stifle, and the Two Pithing Needle are what we're looking for. Yeah. Um, and in, I guess we're, we want to go with an end step 2020 then. Although I guess Lotus Petal does mean that, or I'm sorry, not Lotus Petal. The Pithing Needle would allow us to be able to do a little bit of a slower 2020. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's... Frosty's this, this tanking. Is hard, like, this, is a lot of, uh, this is a lot of pressure on Frosty's mana right now as well. Because of the two petals are one-shots. And then the port on the um, gemstone mine during upkeep. So it looks like Frosty's going to follow up with the Thespian stage and then pass. Hmm. So I'm still wondering because Frosty still potentially has it right now. If uh, Frosty has um, an Elvis Spirit Guide, a crop rotation, if she has those two cards in hand, this is still an instant Merrill Age. One mana short, correct? Uh, crop rotation. Yeah, still one mana short. Sorry, I kept on thinking that you could tap the dark depths for many. You can't. Um, yeah, still one mana short. But deploy the Caracas. The Caracas now. Oh, looks like we drew. We got a two drop. Revoker. Ooh. That is a good draw. Ooh, that is great. What do you name here? We just named stage, correct? Uh, you can actually cannot name stage with Revoker. Oh, so Revoker. Right. Revoker. Uh, is different from Pithing Needle in that Revoker cannot name land cards. However, Revoker can hit mana abilities. So we could hit the pedal here. It's known, but it yeah. I feel like it's just Hexmage, right? I think Let's Hexmage. See. Let's see what that name is. I actually like pedal here. To be Frosty is thinking about her response at the moment. It looks like the Revoker yeah. is on the stack at the moment. Yeah, which I don't uh, don't blame her for thinking hard about this. So it resolves, and we'll see what the name is here. We're getting Tax twisted with the mom again. Name, so, name Petal. Petal. Yeah. I actually do like that, though, because it turns Frosty off of mana, right? 
it's a known hit where yeah. Vampire Hex Mage can be a little bit of a whiff. Well, the other thing too is Vampire Hex Mage doesn't stop the Thespian stage from copying Dark Depths. This right, is our is one turn to be able to deploy without the uh, without the being ported down on mana at all. Yeah. Thank you, Bear, for the 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 names on screen there. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, eternally surprised. Uh, we found with the no cutting to top eight, we found 36, 37 to be the sweet spot ourselves. So, And we were just unfortunately right on that cusp today. Although it, yeah. it worked perfect, didn't it? It worked perfectly we had the, we had the because perfect we actually pilot. had someone drop at the very last second, so it worked out <laughs> absolutely clean. And Frosty passes. Yeah. So, <clears throat> this is rough. See the snow planes. Yep. So this is a Thalia. So if Frosty's going to do anything, she basically has to go now. However, this is kind of rough. So now if you're in Tarmogot's spot, well, I suppose you'd port right now anyway. But um, if you're going to... Um, well, no, you'd you port wouldn't. regardless. Because uh, you'd be... You'd get to untap before the Merit Lage could attack if you needed to bounce it with Caracas. Oh, are we talking about on Frosty's upkeep doing the port? Yes. Okay. Oh, interesting. So we're actually porting right now. Oh, this is a heads up play. I like that actually a lot. Oh, second, second crop rotation. That's tight. That is real great. Oh. However, <laughs> Frosty's still short mana. Because Frosty has no mana in pool and the Lotus Petal can't be cracked for anything. Oh, that's so right. Oof. This is rough. But So but, we're, ooh, we're, we're seeing if there's a fear guide in hand. If Frosty is actually able to go grab Dark Depths... Um, oh, no, no. You need the... Um, right, the stage will get tapped before the second... Crop rotation will resolve because I was going to say if you go get Dark Depths and uh, uh, Urborg here, that so allows you to go off. But there's there's two ways for this to work right now. It's that we get second stage and uh, Dark Depths with these two crop yeah. rotations and have Elder Spirit Guide in hand to be the additional yeah. mana source, tapping this one that's being tapped with Port just for mana in response. Um, yeah. Or the other way is we let this happen. And we make the 2020 on Frosty's turn and then either have the Stifle, the Knot of This World, or the Pithing Needle in hand. Those are kind of the two potential ways that this is really going to be able to work. Ooh. It's Wasteland. Okay. Interesting. Oh, I love that single Wasteland in this list. That is so great. Yeah. Very, very good get there as well. I actually kind of like this too because uh, you know you can't get anything out this turn anyway, or it would be super risky. So in this case, I think Frosty's just going to hold back for now until she has the ability to do it, and then she can also just waste the Caracas. Interesting. That's the other thing as well is that Caracas is legendary, so Tarmogot cannot play multiples. So Frosty can just wasteland the Caracas as soon as she makes a Merit Lage. That's very true. And interesting not attacking with the mom here. Deciding to hold that back. I guess with the with the deck that's not being known, there is some threat of there being abrupt decay's main board, possibly. Um but it looks knowing perfect, knowing these perfect 75s, it is looking like we're missing a point of damage here. Yeah. Now let's see. This game's actually been very intense. <laughs> My head hurts already. This is why I can't play Death and Taxes. <laughs> this is exactly why. There's not enough berserks. So and pass. Seen a pass. Oh. Were we looking for a mana source off the top? I think so. And we just hand on Frosty side. Yeah, 10 side. Phyrexian Revoker has been uh, huge. Yeah. And yeah, naming the pedal was definitely correct here. So we're actually going for it looks like just a main phase tap right now. Or is this. What is it? Uh, so we're tapping the Thespian stage. And then crunches in for four. 
Another thing of note here as well is Frosty has no colored mana. And also, she's being choked by uh, Thalia here in terms of how much mana she needs. Hmm. This is interesting. Yeah. This is actually a pretty rough spot for Frosty to be in. If she can just go Urborg here, though, oh man. But that being said, I still think you're in a pretty rough position because you need multiple Not of This Worlds and you also have to be able to play the Thalia attacks on them. I guess that is the only single draw to get out here, right? Because we also need the Wasteland activation. Yes, and that's just it. Is the because the Wasteland, you know, if Frosty tries to Karakas or if Frosty makes the 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 Merit Lage on her turn in order to play around Port, then Tarmago end step activates the um, end step activates the Karakas tries to bounce it. Not of this world will Sylvan. bounce the. We're seeing a Sylvan scrying. Yeah. Um. Oh, we have the exiled Elder Spirit Guide for that. Okay. Uh, okay. Getting Urborg and playing Urborg. I really like playing Urborg here because it gets around some of this mana disruption, right? Yeah. Being the able to tap the Dark Depths is it, so valuable here. It's essentially a soul land at the moment. Yeah. And we're going to hit with a Duress as well. I actually like this here. Mm -hmm. Without seeing the Wasteland. Oh, no. Baracus number two. We oh, can get gosh. A, it's possible to get around this, though, right? To just it is blow possible, up the yeah. Baracus at end step. And then needs to kill that single turn. Yeah. So Frosty still also has one card in hand. And now Goat has one unknown besides the Caracas. Yeah. So... Is that a tap three? No. So, of note here as well, um, the, uh, yeah, there we go, the, there's the Sylvan Scrying go away. I'm just trying to think here in my head about what exactly can be done here. I think Frosty can try and make a token on end step. However, this is a lot of damage, because this is going to put Frosty to seven, and then if this is a Flicker Wisp, or oh, something with three draw. power, then that means that Frosty has to, you know, somehow survive this turn as well. Right? Because if this, like, if, if this card that Tarmogot drew doesn't apply pressure, I think Frosty might actually be able to get this, provided that the card in the hand is a not of this world. I don't know. So the, big issue is, the big back. issue is this port and the double Caracas, right? So... Yeah can port the stage at the moment this in theory force frosty to make the 2020 now if she wants however that makes it so even if you wasteland this caracas the next caracas that can be played on the following turn is going to get you hmm so again yeah, again rough. and stifle or pedal or not pedal needle or uh not of this world yeah i think if you're in frosty's spot i think you just have to be Oh, she is going to go for it. Because I was just going to say... Oh, she's copying Wasteland. Oh. That's sweet. Um, so, uh, yeah, Frosty has to make the Merit Lage on Tarmogot's turn. Uh, of, otherwise, I think she's probably going to get blown out. Of note, Goat is one damage short here. Yeah. Hmm. Man, this game has been very, very, very intense. However, though, this is the issue, is that... Um, Attack for four. In for four. So this get is going to put Frosty three. to three. And now this is the problem, is because Frosty can make a Merit Lage, even if it doesn't get bounced, with the mom, it'll be the third damage. Oh no! Oh no! I think that's the the nail. This is probably going to be the game. Yeah. Wasteland on. I'm assuming on the Urborg. Interesting. I think that's actually probably good in terms of mana because that's basically soul landing. 
Frosty there, and it also turns Frosty off of colors. Yeah, and it means these, weight la these wastelands can't be utilized for the actual ability. Yeah, and here's the Flicker Wisp, so this is going to be lethal damage yeah. for sure on the next and, attack. And the best part is, it can now be... I guess it still stays on pedal. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so Flicker we're actually land. flickering out the Thespian stage here to reset it. Oh, gosh. That's great. Ow. Wow, Dharma Goat showing that they know what's going on here. Oh, for sure. <laughs> this is one of the great things about this matchup is that there's so many points of interaction. Yes. It's just kind of, when you're on the dark depth side, it's kind of like, wait, that card does something good against me? That card does something good against me? Yeah. There's just so many possible plays. All right, and we see Scoop Up. Looks like that's game one. Yep. Let's so, go ahead and look at sideboards. Yeah. For Frosty's sideboard, uh, we have three copies of Sylvan Safekeeper, three copies of Flusterstorm, two Leyland of the Void, two Surgical Extraction, two Abrupt Decay, two Force of Vigor, and one copy of Caracas. What do you think in here? So for me, the cards that I would first be looking at that are possible bring-ins, Abrupt Decay seem like the, the clear shoe-in. Sylvan Safekeeper seem good as well. Um, really Force, like of Vigor, Force of Vigors are marginal. I don't think those will end up coming in. But it's also really big when we're looking at sideboard and you think of the cards that are coming out. So let's say we're bringing the three Safekeepers and the two Decays. What are we taking out here? The Not of This Worlds and the Stifles are good. Uh, yeah. Do we take... Do, we, do you think I we're going to take out a little bit on this here. card? Yeah. I like cutting out the Duress because uh, the Duress in this matchup only hits Sword Supply Shares and Aether Vial. And, well, yeah. I guess Equipment as well. But those are not normally the things you're worried about because you want to be hitting, you know, your Flicker Wisps, your Thalias, your Revokers, Creature Spells. What right? I would think is that we... I'm not sure if Frosty is going to be able to be on the very fast plan. I think that there That's are just so many potential... If you go... You just die from so many potential... Um, turn one Swords, turn one's Path out of the board, and turn one uh, Wasteland or Caracas, that I think possibly will be going down on the Lotus Petals as well. I think the Scryings are something that we're going to want to keep in, so maybe it's that Discard Sweep being trimmed, and then a couple of the Petals. However, yeah. this, this is theory crafting on my end, I'll be totally honest. Yeah, well, Frosty plays the deck more than either of us do, so oh, that's yeah. a good point. <laughs> um, uh, one... oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Let's jump over to Death and Taxes. Sure. Uh, so, on Death and Taxes' side, we have two copies of Mindbreak Trap, two Surgical Extractions, two Deafening Silence, two Path to Exile, two Rest in Peace, two Cataclysm, one <laughs> Containment Priest, one Sword of Feast and Famine, and one Sanctum Prelate. Um, well, I want well, I want to see the Cataclysm, but that's because I'm a meme lord. I, not, I don't really think those are going to be coming in. I actually <laughs> really like Cataclysm against oh. the deck, to be completely honest. Puts you on one land. Right, I, and you I, also are running the flagstones. I can respect the single ca the cat the single cataclysm. I feel like two is a little bit too much to be honest. However, yeah. the path to exiles are absolute locks. At the same yes. time, I wonder if we would be able to see some surgical extractions coming in. Um, this is a I lot more like marginal. Surgical in this matchup, largely because that as soon as one dark depth goes away, if you have the ability to you know swords or Caracas the merit Lage, and then surgical the dark depths in the graveyard, then Frosty has almost no way to come back. That's exactly what I'm thinking as well. Um, I think that those are really the only things I can see coming in. Containment Priest, of course, does nothing because the non-token rider on it. What do you think is coming out, though? Sword of Fire and Ice, Batter Skull, and Umuzawa Jite kind of seem like the easy ones. Maybe keep in Batter Skull because you need the Stone Forces to still be live. Um, and Spirit I, I of the Labyrinth as well. Batter Skull for sure. Yeah, Spirit of the Labyrinth seems like the other easy slot to be taking yeah. out, from my opinion. Like, cu cutting cutting uh, the Batter Skull is just cutting a clock from the deck. Very true. So we're, I guess we're thinking Sword, Jite, and uh, the Spirit of the Labyrinth, then, is the cards that could potentially be coming out? I think so. I think those sound reasonable. Um, the Sword is just additional damage, and again, you're in, in this matchup, Tarmogod is 100%. He has to be the control player. Absolutely. What do you think about Sanctum Prelate? I actually don't mind Sanctum Prelate here. Um, I guess, hilariously, with Sanctum Prelate, you can just name seven and it turns not of this world off. <laughs> but um, if you name one, A, your Sword Supplashers turn off and your Aether Vials turn off, but you're also turning off Stifle, you're turning off Crop Rotation, you're turning off all the Hand Disruption. You're turning off lots of stuff out of Frosty's end. 
Yeah, and I wonder about putting it on two personally myself, being able to shut off a little bit of the long game with being able to hit the Sylvan Scryings. It just seems like Sanctum Prelate might have a little bit more play than Skyclave Apparition, where Apparition can only hit a Vampire Hex Mage and force it to be activated, or it can hit... Uh... It can hit Mirror Lage as well, but... Oh, isn't it, isn't it non-token for uh, Skyclave? Oh, it might be. I, I yeah, Sky Skyclave is non-land, non-token permanent, so uh, it is not able. It is not actually able to interact with the dark depths. Oh, that's good. It's to okay know. though. You got Flicker Wisp though. You'll be totally fine. That's fine. Yeah, Flicker Wisp is still good. Flicker Wisp is an absolute beast in this matchup. Not only can it block the Merit Lage, it can flicker the Merit Lage. As you saw, we can fl uh, flicker everything else. Hey, Bosso, thank you very much for the follow. Oh, we're gonna get a turn one needle here. Do you need Wasteland or do you need Caracas? I have to assume it's Wasteland. Could be incorrect, though. Yeah, Wasteland was the name. Yeah. Yeah, seems right. There are more of those to be dealing with it within the list, right? There's three Caracases. Yeah. And, well, there's four Wastelands as well, so. And it so seems like... Eight mile. Yep, and it seems like Goat did Mulligan down to six. Yeah. So I have a question. Are the Snow-Covered Plains ever relevant? Is the only way it's relevant if an Oko gives you an Ice Saint Quaddle? Uh, or an Astrolabe. Okay, that's true. But yes, otherwise it's just snow for the snakes for the sake of snow. I miss the good old days of flexing in between snow planes and some planes to make predict on you a little less good. Those are the yeah. glory days of death and taxes. <laughs> Seeing yeah. second stage here. Oof. Oh, thank you, Fox. It is Karakai for the plural of Caracas. Good to know. <laughs> We're going to see double white here. Into, I would assume... Oh, Revoker. Revoker. Revoker again. Good. So now in this case... Naming Petal was so good last time. Yeah. I kind of agree. It looks like Frosty wants to do something with it right now. So we're going to crop rotate right now. Seems good. So yeah, and, oh, and of up. note, of note, you, uh, Dyslex, or Dixelia, thank you very much for the follow. <laughs> uh, so we are going Manicom to, oh, we're getting a Mana Confluence. Oh, I actually like that. I don't not mind getting locked off the Mana Sources, or not being locked off the Colored Mana Sources. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind that at all. And the other thing as well is that, you know, um, you got to still name a non-land permanent with the Revoker, right? Uh, name the Vampire Hex Mage. Yep. Which is a fantastic name. Seems like the correct name when there's an onboard pedal. Yeah. So let's see. So getting this... Mana Confluence tells me that I suspect that we have a Dark Depths in hand. And that we have either that. some discard outlet or, there we go, Sylvan Safekeeper. Very, very good one. Oh, there's a Dark Depths. And there's depth. the Dark okay. Depths. Perfect. So, of note, though, Frosty loses two lands when she makes the Barrel Age this way. Um, so she's going to need a couple more lands to be played here. And this could be, yeah, firing off the swords. I really like firing off the swords in the safekeeper here right now. For sure. So Frosty's in the tank here. Do I protect this or not? Sacking the dark depths. Sacking the dark depths to protect it. I don't mind that, actually. I do not either. If this is a second sword, so oh my gosh! I nope. mean, as long okay. as long as we have the other access to another dark depths, to an, either another search effect or the natural dark depths. Yeah, smashing for two. We'd definitely take that one. Yeah. Of note, this swords even with with it not like actually resolving, it was just a time walk. Basically, yes. So dark depths number two. So Frosty there didn't we have go. a backup dark depths. Now, that being said, Frosty's still one mana shy of making a copy. Do we have Elvish Spirit Guide in hand? That, that beautiful, beautiful so ESG? The, yeah, yeah, Elvish Spirit Guide would be very good here. 
And I also like this particular board position as well. So we do see the Aether Vial on three, though, which is very worrisome. Uh, largely because of Flicker Wisp. Absolutely. Oof. Yeah, that's the one problem about Sylvan Safe Keepers. It's hard to keep the shield up in response to other things because it's based on the number of lands you have. Yeah, at the moment, if there is an ESG and we go for it on this end step, there is only one safe, Sylvan Safekeeper activation to use from the, the Mana Confluence. Yeah, which, to be fair, could be enough. Tactic right? two. Uh, unless, you know, if Tarmago only has one piece of interaction, then it could be fine. Like, no sort of splashers in hand only has one Flicker Wisp. Of note, though, even if it is Flicker Wisp, we're not getting through unless we have crop rotation for Saziri's step, correct? Yes. Which would be an absolutely yeah. phenomenal play. Yeah, that's the... <laughs> that, that's what we're really afraid of here. Yeah. However, though, that's kind of the problem is that if we go crop rotation for Sajiri's step, target the Merit Lage to give it pro white response, Tarmago does something. If Frosty gives it... Uh, gives it Shroud, then will not gain the protection. Yep, and it looks like uh, Tarmogoat passed, and Frosty is really tanking at this end step at the moment. And yeah. it looks like he went all the way through. Yep, just drawing a card. I actually kind of like that there. I think Frosty needs more mana to go off. Yeah. And is that just a pass back? Oh, gosh. So we're going to sack the Silent Clearing here on end step. Yeah, indicated this matchup Ooh. is really rough. Really, really rough. That being said, I would much rather be in Tarmogoats. Like, in this particular matchup, I would much rather be looking from the perspective of the DNT player than the other player there. So we got that, we got the vile we got the vile bluff there. The activate and yes. see if you're gonna respond at all, put nothing in. Yes, I love that. Oh, heads up play. So great. And we see a Caracas coming down. Yep. Ouch. This Back is really two. bad now. Get Frosty down to 13. Yeah, 13. There we go. Frosty with three cards in hand here still. I'm going to assume one of these is not of this world or Stifle. Probably. Just because we aren't deploying out any lands, it doesn't seem to be... I guess, you know, we could also just be unable to cast some Vampire Hex Mages at the moment. That is true. That would be super unfortunate. Yeah, this matchup is really, really bad for Rainbow Depths. Really bad. Like we were saying earlier, there's just so many points of interaction. Yeah. Like every we when we look over at Goat's list, uh, over half the cards all are strictly good in this matchup. Yes. Yeah, this and is a like really rough spot a little bit. to be in. Yeah. yeah. So Frosty looking... She's passing back with four cards in hand? Yep. Yeah. That's really rough that Frosty's not drawing any lands. Really rough. This Phyrexian Revoker might just deal 20 damage. Ouch. That would be a story, eh? <laughs> That's the Vandal Lions beat down. Yeah. And we're seeing another vial. Another vial number two. So it looks like Tarmogoat has four cards in hand, too. And I imagine most of this stuff is gas. If it isn't being deployed, right? Probably, because if if you're holding on to a Thalia, I imagine you would have played it by now, unless oh, you're worried about keeping a Swords up. That would be another issue. But in that case, I would feel that you, we wouldn't deploy this file first, right? Exactly. I, I like to me, if I was looking at a Thalia Swords, I would be playing the Thalia first, right, and then that way I can leave the Swords mana up because I'd rather just have the disruption for that. Plus, it's a faster clock. Yeah. So it looks like we're going to pass back. So I'm assuming we're going to be tanking on end step here again. 
And yeah, Frosty's at 11 life. Like, this this is not too much longer here, I'd imagine. So we're going to crop rotate on end step here. Is this getting Urborg? I imagine this is getting Urborg. Yeah, and then we're going to make a token. It's got to make him have it at a certain point. Yeah. Every additional draw that Frosty gives to Tarmogoat is just... It's getting worse and worse for her, right? There are just yeah. so many live draws for Goat at this point. Yeah. I agree. We only got a single sa a Sylvan Safekeeper activation at the moment. That being said, if you have Safekeeper and not of this world, I don't mind this. Yeah, that's very true. We don't have mana up for Stifle, but we do have those not of those worlds. Yeah. And there's four cards in hand. Or three now, correct? After that crop rotation? Three, yeah. Um, so was that... That was so the response was that to Krakus. On... Yes, I understand that. Was that on end step, or was that... Oh, that was during upkeep. Flicker Wisp come... or Oh, just actually oh. hit it, and then take a hit! <laughs> I love those bluffs. That's so great. Ooh. That's so good! Just, you know, sometimes you just gotta make them have it. Yep. All right, fantastic. I actually really like those bluff activations multiple times. I'm a big wonder, believer I, that that's correct. Real yes, big believer. I agree. If any, like, you should activate your Aether Vials every single turn if there's no loss in doing so. All right, to, to be me. fair, though, I don't think I can give that advice. A very long time ago, back in the days of playing Modern, I definitely convinced a buddy to... Uh, the entire drive down to Columbus, my buddy's playing green white taxes, and I keep telling him, You gotta keep activating that vial, just really bluff them out so they don't like they think that you're not gonna do anything when you finally activate it in two and are about to put in Leon and Arbiter, right? And he of course does it in a match and absolutely. So I don't think I can give that advice in all good conscience anymore. Yeah. Carlone ninety, thank you very much for the follow. I was just mainly thinking, like, you know, I have the vial on three. You should activate it every turn, provided that it's just a pass back. Yes, right. All right. I, I will yeah. give you that, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Like, activating an Aether Vial in response to your opponent doing something I don't think is right, unless you need to. But if it's just on end step, you just tap them. <laughs> it's pretty meme -y. It's pretty great, no matter yeah. what. All right, so we no, do know Goat is going to be on the play here. We've seen Goat mull down to six in both of these games so far. Yeah. Um, do you think that these sideboard plans are going to be changing at all now that the play and draw has switched over? Um... possible um i'm not entirely sure actually never mind um it it's so hard in this particular case uh i definitely think actually cataclysm is probably really bad on the draw so if cataclysms didn't come in they potentially could now i still don't know if they should be coming in uh dark malthus thank you very much for the follow i think that now th I think now that we're that uh, goat is on the play, I actually can respect the two cataclysms coming in. Also, because during that match, I also realized I was so focused in on the equipment being able to come out and the spirits. But also, Mother of Runes is a pretty dead card. It's basically That's a one room deep pick and can play around an abrupt decay. The two of that are in the list. So I suppose that is another slot that can come out. In theory, you're going to be able to stall Frosty enough to be able to get to four mana. So yeah. I, I think I do like ditching a Mother of Runes as well to get the second Cataclysm in. Yeah, I can see that. Cataclysm, especially on the play, would be very good. And Cataclysm is just an absolute beating against Frosty. I've lost a Cataclysm so many needs, times. Needs needs to have X lands in play. Yeah, unfortunately, when you only have an exploration, uh, losing a single land is a time lock. Yes. Um, actually, another good thing, too, about naming Vampire Hexmage off of that Revoker is you can't Hexmage the uh, Aether Vials. That is true. That, that is a legal play. Yeah, because if Frosty had the uh, Hexmage down last game, um, not only is Hexmage a first striker that can block, Hexmage also can just reset the Aether Vials. And Charble, definitely agree. Feel good, look good, play good. Yeah. All right, so it looks like this time the mulligans have shifted over. Goat is keeping his seven, but Frosty is mulling down to six at the moment. Yeah, which is not where you want to be if you're in Frosty's position. This matchup is hard enough without a mulligan, no, especially sure. when Tarma Goat kept seven.
Can we also just point out how great of a bluff Frosty's playmat is throughout this entire tournament? Frosty, a known death and taxes player, sits down with Swords of Plowshares playmat. What do you think she's going to be on? 100% of the time I go, yeah, you're probably on death and taxes. Yeah, you know, both, you get 20, 20 death and one. taxes playmats too. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, shipping this back too. We're going down Ooh. to five. Ooh. We're down to five. Oh this, no. This is not what we want to see when we're on the draw. No. That being said, if Frosty gets a super, super hot five, that would be good. But I would not trust a super, super hot five to be able to protect a Merit Lage. Not against Karakas Wasteland Swords Path deck. That is for yes. sure. Yeah, definitely. This is a rough position to be in, but this has actually been a fantastic final so far. So, Oh, absolutely. What a great way to start off the season. I'm sorry, yeah. start off our NA season, our North America side. Yes, exactly. So for anyone who's curious, we are the MTG Paper Legacy Discord. Uh, we just, as you can see here, we play over webcam. We play Legacy all day, every day. And uh, every Saturday we have tournaments. On Tuesdays we have Fight Nights, which are basically another streamed event. Uh, three rounds and then we also have a monthly league that goes on the league for february is currently closed um and we will be moving on to playoffs next week which is very exciting uh however the last february or last tuesday in february league signups for the following month march will go up and uh any of the saturday or sunday uh, weekend tournaments any of those will earn you invitational points uh the league will earn you invitational points and then you can use those points to try and qualify for the invitation where our top eight players go to a double elimination event. We had that last weekend, and it was absolutely stellar. Congratulations on your second place finish there, Oliver. <laughs> so close. Turns out Blood Moon is a real good card. Oh, yeah. So we're Blood seeing Snow Plains pass. Frosty goes ahead and draws and just plays a Rainbow Land and goes ahead and passes as well. Yeah, which to be fair, this is a good start, although that port is definitely not what Frosty wants to see at all. Oh, no. Yeah, and that's the other thing as well, is that you can't just freely float mana with this land. No, you cannot. Yeah, first strike is very strong. You are absolutely correct, Charble. <laughs> that kind of is the only other way for Depths to win, though, is the Vampire Hexmage beatdown. Yeah. Although, no, for, with Elvish Reclaimer, there's now a 3-4 in the deck. That is true. Elvish Reclaimer is a very big creature, too. So Seeing Port on Upkeep again, it looks like. Yep. No pressure being put down, though. Frosty really has all the time in the world to try to sculpt a hand to get through uh, yeah. the interaction. This this slow of a draw is definitely what Frosty wants to see on a Mulda 5. At the same time, though, Goat keeping the 7 makes me very afraid of what else is in his hand, right? Yes, absolutely. With this little pressure being applied, um, I'd imagine like, there could be surgicals in Tarmogoat's hand, for all we know. And if that's the case, then Frosty needs to make sure this Merit Lage sticks 100%. Because if Goat can answer this Merit Lage and Surgical the Dark Depths, Frosty's in a whole pile of trouble. What if we see next turn Cataclysm? How happy would you be? I think that I, given this state right now, I think that would be very good. However, uh, actually, no, given that uh, if this was um, Flagstones into Cataclysm, I think that would be really good. Snow Plains. Oh, ever, I don't know if it's worth it if you're on Goat's side. Next turn, where you can go Cataclysm, then play a second land, I think it's very good. Because if you can just go, okay, I'll sacrifice all the planes, keep the port, play a Caracas, so that way I can keep porting you, I think that's really good. Vial comes down? Yep, which is exactly where you want to be if you're going to Cataclysm here right away. I'd be so, so happy if that's what ended up happening, but honestly, I'm doubtful. Especially... Passive, no activation? Yeah, it looks like there's no port activation in upkeep. Oh, goodness, that's not good. Yeah, I heard about that, Charble. You had four chalices out on one, two, three, and four. That sounds rough. The fact that you weren't just <laughs> dead is pretty impressive, though. Yes. I have been there at, in the Painter Mirror before. It was horrific, especially because there was a Trinisphere out and a Blood Moon, so I could not make triple colorless mana to play with the Engineered Explosives on zero. I had to make red, which means that I could only play it X is one and could not destroy the chalices. <laughs> I'm interested to know how many cards Frosty has in hand at this point. Yeah. We're still at five, I imagine, right? 
Uh, yes, it looks like five there is correct. So we got Silent Clearing out now for Tarmogoat. Yeah, our lovely spotter Pie Boy is confirming that there are five. We're seeing the crop rotation. All right. And then in response, this is going to be a tapping that. So I'd imagine this is going to be a stifle. Yes. And so the herbord here, the herbord here allows Frosty to still make the merit lage, even with um, even with uh, the reduction in mana, which is very good. So, oof. I don't know what exactly is in um, in Goat's hand. To imagine but, uh, there's a knot of this world in Frosty's hand. To be going for it this, uh, this in the dark. Yes. Legend rule. Loses yep. one. Trigger. And there we go. There's a second one. And then here we go for number three. Oh, this is it. Big money, big money. For swords, all right. Swords to plowshares. I also really like this as well because the Aether Vile is only a one. this world. You did get the knot of this world. Is there a second sword? Oh my sword? goodness. Is there a second swords? Pow. Pow. Oh no. Oh, let's see. Elvish Spirit oh. Guide. Prop rotation for Sajiri. Oh, yep. oh the big brain plays. Oh my gosh. There, it needs to be third swords or path effect right now. <laughs> If Frosty can pull this off, holy cow! It's a jury step protection from white! I think Frosty has one card left in hand after this crop rotation as well. I think so. Oh my gosh! This was exactly what Frosty this needed. Is great. This is so tight. This is so good. Wow! Untap. Oh gosh. Frosty's hellbent. Oh no! Smash for 20. Bluff by Floating White. I think this might be a bluff by Floating White. And Tarmogoat oh. scoops it up. Frosty got it. Congratulations. What a great match. What this a fantastic, fantastic match. match. Wow. May I say, both players so played that match incredibly well. That game yes. one was incredibly impressive on Tarmogoat's side. Same with Frosty as well. But what an ending. What a great way to end our first Saturday tournament of the season. We're seeing uh, Sylvan Safekeepers. Is that a Force of Vigor that came in? Uh, um, one abrupt decay, or two Abrupt Decays. Looks yeah, like so one Force of Vigor did come in. Yeah. And then the three Sylvan Safekeepers, two Abrupt Decays. Oh, both Force of Vigors came in. Oh, fascinating. Wow. Wow, that really was just an absolutely the phenomenal game. And yeah, congratulations to Frosty as well. On a mull to five. I would love yeah. to know what else was in Goat's hand if Goat was just flooding out at that moment. Oh, um, you see the double cataclysm. Yes. Yeah, and it, and it looks like Goat decided to actually bring in the sort of Feast and Famine, interestingly. We didn't really I think about that I actually really do like Feast and Famine because it, get, it gets past Elvish Reclaimer and it also gets past uh, Vampire Hex Mage. Yeah, and I guess also just being able to do the hand attack plan to kind of whittle Frosty's resources down can be pretty good as well. And a single Surgical, it looks like. We didn't see two come in. Just yeah. Ask Mira, thank again. you very much for the follow. Thank you so much. Once again, really, Ooh. really great match on both sides. Yeah, and Evil, thank you very much for the subscription. Much appreciated. Oh. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you. Yeah. So anyway, uh, we are the MTG Paper Legacy Discord. This has been the finals of our uh, Saturday uh, weekly challenge. Uh, I am PresBOTW, joined up above by Oliver V. And uh, this is this was an absolutely fantastic match to have on stream. Absolutely. Hopefully, we'll get more a couple of these viewers in our future challenges going forward. Of note, next week is going to be one of our EU and NA tournaments. So this week, unfortunately, we did not have an EU tournament for uh, the typical Sunday. However, next week, there will be an EU tournament as well. Yep, which will be really good. So uh, uh, of note as well for invitational points, we will, I think think i need to double check and clarify but i believe it's we will be counting the higher scored event of the two for invitational points. that is what we are doing yeah so you can't play in both they score double points you only get to keep your best run but you still get to keep your best run so if you play on saturday don't like your score you can try again on sunday well everyone take care have a fantastic yes. rest of your day or night wherever you are and bless up have a fantastic rest of your weekend have a good one